And welcome back to another episode of Blue Review. This is the Tuesday, March 19th edition, and I was feeling the jam today. Yeah, you were you were grooving today, Parker. Nice job. <laughs> I like it. You get out of, got the head bob, got the whole thing moving. I like it. I, like it. I was feeling it. Good vibes, good vibes today. Like we said before the show, <laughs> namaste, right? Yeah, um, that's right. That's right. So we are less than 24 hours away, Greg, from Dodgers opening baseball. Uh Therefore, yeah. we're going to have a big episode today. We got Travis Rogers most likely coming in. Uh, we're going to preview Glasnow versus uh, who, who'd they throw up? You Darvish. Or I'm having a brain fart. Darvish. Darvish. Yep. So we'll preview the game. We'll talk about Mookie and some of the stuff that that one, two, three top of the lineup is going to do. Uh, perhaps ju not just this series, but throughout the year, because it's uh, there's potential for historical things going on. And I'll, I'll kind of hit you guys with that. But I before like it, like we it. get started. Everyone, as always, the Blue Review is presented by LAX. I've missed the read the last few episodes, and I've had to do it at the you end. Got it at the end, yeah. So you're good. But I just want everyone to know that the LAX is transforming the travel experience. So they're saving guests time, uh, reducing traffic. There's tons of things they're doing there. They, I think Sedona was saying the other day that they have some sort of drive-up valet experience now, making all that yep. easier. It's just, I mean, it's beautiful. Like LAX and traveling is stressful, but. They're changing that and making it easier for you. So if you want to know more information, fly at flylax.com slash transforming LAX is the place to go. So without further ado, Greg, let's get into this. The chat is already popping off. Already I see popping. everyone in Good there. Good morning, chat. Hey, I love it. Keep it Good going. Good morning, dead. Dead meow. Yeah. And Stone's Mason. Love <laughs> Logos reason. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Ruben Flores brought up a good point. He says, do we even call it opening day? It's... uh just feels different. Something about I mean, this feels different. It's Dodgers Padres opening day. It's not opening day of baseball. That'll be March 28th. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you can call it for them, I guess. But I don't know. I, I, does it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I, I don't really care. I just know that I'm watching the Dodgers at three o'clock in the morning tomorrow. And I don't know, like, as of right now, I'm completely torn on whether I'm going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. I know I'm setting my alarm, Parker. I know uh -huh. I'm going to try. I don't have a TV in my room because your room is for two things and we can talk about what those two things are on another show. But <laughs> but I'm going to move to my couch and watch and watch and at least try to watch the game. I don't know. I don't know if I'll stay awake. Are you going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to watch? So originally I think I was I was dead set. I was going to be up and I'll be fine getting up. But now I'm a little 50-50 as well. Uh, I'm actually going to do a quick little fishing trip tonight from about fishing 5 trip. to Yeah, yeah. From 5 to 9, I'm going to go uh, out for some lobster on, I think it's off of oh, Marina Del Rey. Yeah. So awesome. the fact that I might come back at 9-ish, 10-ish, cook some lobster, by the time I'm already settling down, it's like, if I do want to watch the Dodgers, I'm just going to have to stay up. Yeah, and I don't know if I, I want. Mean, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, if you if you want to be here on time and do the exactly correctly <laughs> tomorrow, then you probably shouldn't. But you no, know, exactly. you can watch highlights and all that good stuff. And Tony Forkush, I hopefully I'm saying that right. Tony Forkush, like you know, like all right, anyways. Uh, does this year's freeway series count? No, it does not. So these games against the Padres count. Two games against the Padres count. So then they come home. And they have played three against the Angels that mean absolutely nothing except that it's the freeway series. Nothing more, nothing less. So, no, those games do not count. And it's kind of ridiculous that they're doing it that way. But either way, you essentially look at the season as a 160-game season and not a 162-game season. Yeah, I mean. Whatever this is. Yeah, we, we mentioned it in a lot of our first episodes just about. Here we go. We have to go to Korea. And we've seen it's a success. Like, it is uh proving to be something that is growing the game you can see that it's different out there it's exciting but we still have our little tiffs with with just the scheduling and that's been mentioned on the blue review but yeah it does not count um they're gonna go face the angels and it's gonna be meaningless a lot of the guys aren't even gonna play because they're gonna be obviously either either jet lagged or just tired but right. you still have to get ramped up for the season it's ugh, it's 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 just stupid. It's just so much for the mind. A week off is just it's just crazy and weird, and I don't really like it. But this is what they're doing, and it's probably not going the way. Uh, according to Dylan Hernandez, we talked about it maybe a week ago. Um, they may be going to Japan next year. Yeah. So if they do that, it's, it's to go see the Nippon Ham 
fighters. I think that that's what they are. That was the name of uh, Shohei's old team. So, yeah, so that could be happening. And it, this is always this is going to be a part of baseball now. More and more teams are going to be doing it. It's going the Dodgers are going to do it because they're going to a worldwide brand and want to grow that brand for the sport as well. So it's not going anywhere whether we like it or not. It's all yeah. about the money. You know what I mean? So with all that being said. Like we mentioned, the game, less than 24 hours away. And before we kind of have Travis in here to preview some of that and talk about Mookie and some of the bigger things, uh, the pitching matchup, more specifically for us, Glasnow, why don't we kind of get into him and what we can expect, A, to see tomorrow, or, yeah, tomorrow, or and B, just like throughout the season. Um, so I'll just kind of let you start, like, He's never really had a complete game in his career. There's injury issues, of course. Uh, never pitched over 120 innings in a season. What can we expect? And do you think the Dodgers and him are going to find a better balance than in the career past? So, I mean, I hope so. Uh, you're right. He has never gone over 120 innings. He is a liability, uh, to put an injury liability. Those are things that are going to happen. I, I expect to see when he is on the mound for him to be very, very good. Um, hopefully it can last as long as the whole season. Maybe hopefully that this Dodger medical staff can get him to the point of where he can stay healthy. I don't know if that's going to happen, obviously, but he looks healthy right now. And his last start, he looked fantastic. I think he had like eight strikeouts in five innings or something along those lines. And he's been looking good. I expect him to be that guy again. If he stays healthy, he can hit 200 strikeouts in the season. Um, maybe even more. Um, he's going to, I would expect him tomorrow to, you know, strike out a lot of guys again tomorrow. He may give up a couple of runs because, you know, he's just trying to like, he's just his first start nerves and all that kind of good stuff. But I, I really think he's going to have a really big game against the Padres and Darvish. I'm going to say 10 K's and one run over six innings. Um, nobody goes complete games anymore. That's just not a thing. It's it, True. unless your host. Uh, you know, it just depends on who you are, but really it doesn't happen very Sandy Alcantara is like the only guy that does it in my Logan opinion. Webb, maybe a little bit there, but we don't speak maybe. of the guys up there. <laughs> eh, whatever, you know, they're just they're they're just dudes. But uh just a guy. Um, but no, with you Darvish, I'm a little bit worried about facing you Darvish. He actually kind of has the Dodgers numbers. He yeah. the Dodgers tend to get wins against him. So if you look at his win loss record, they're they're five and four against you. But they're also it's like a two ERA with a below one whip. It's like a point eight whip. Like he just has the Dodgers numbers. And now against this lineup, Parker, I don't know if it's going to be like that. When you're having to face the lineup and what it looks like, they're going to have to be. He's going to have to be fully on point. And if they're going to hit him, I think this Dodgers lineup will hit him. So I think the Dodgers get the win. I don't know. Don't don't think they get a lot against you. Maybe two or three runs and they end up winning. But we'll see what happens. Where's your, where I mean, your if, thoughts on this? Uh, I mean, if if I was living in a perfect world, I'm seeing Otani hit a dinger on his first at bat, you know, as a official <laughs> Dodger. Like, if I was living in a fantasy, all that would go down. But I, I tend to agree with you. I think that the numbers show it. You has their numbers. The whip is very low. Um, the ERA, like you mentioned, is low. So he has their numbers in a sense of, he must feel comfortable. Like maybe he's maybe he steps it up more. It's a more meaningful game because of the history, whatever it may be. I agree with you, Greg. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an exciting game, uh, albeit at 3 a.m. It's going to be hard to be an exciting <laughs> game, but it will nonetheless. Like it's going to be great baseball, uh, and we've seen that they're playing great baseball leading up to it, and even in the exhibition games, both teams are playing pretty good baseball. Um, so over. Out of anything, I think I'm just more excited because I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, you and Glasnow, it's not necessarily, I think, what you expected in terms of Battle of the Stars. If you were thinking, you know, ace versus ace, but technically they are. They are aces, and Glasnow was paid to be an ace. Um, we know what Yamamoto is, but it's his first year. So I feel like this is going to be a really good test and like a good buffer for Glasnow to set the pace for the Dodgers, uh, set the pace and just letting the Dodgers know that it was worth it to take that, uh, you know, get rid of guys like Pepio, some promising things for him. No, absolutely. I mean, I think Glasnow, I think is going to be good. And I see in the chat that dead me loves to troll me, but this isn't actually a troll. He just says, uh, 
damn 10 Ks and one earned run. That's ambitious for even it's his first outing. Now it's his first outing as a Dodger. It's not his first outing ever. He's still a good pitcher and him throw, having 10 Ks. That's kind of what he's, he does. He gets strikeouts. He's a strikeout pitcher. So if you can go, if, it's very easy, not easy, but that's something that he can do on a regular basis. I actually expect him and Yamamoto to have a multiple, multiple 10K outings. This is the first time in quite some time that I'm actually excited about a Dodger pitching staff and getting and getting strikeouts. Like Kershaw can get over 10 strikeouts, and but that's not – it wasn't a massive part of the game. Obviously, it was a good part of it, especially with that curveball. But – we never really had like multiple guys like, oh, that's going to be 10 Ks. That's going to be 10 Ks. That's going to be 10 Ks. And now you kind of have that in this starting rotation. So it's not out, out of the realm of possibility. And I think that he's going to be ramped up and he's going to pitch really, really well at three o'clock in the yeah. morning for us. Not for yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> jeez. Jeez. No, but we, we like keep mentioning it. You know, the strikeout stuff is there. He probably has a top three curveball in the league. If not, the best uh and then he's hovering around 100 like he's been hovering around 100 in the spring training which is which which all that means is that his right arm is feeling amazing yep and then on top of that they're adding a sinker to his game you know prior's already throwing a little that prior dust on him pixie dust yeah that pixie dust (laughs) there so i think it's gonna be super exciting uh now on the other end the offensive end you know as i'm sitting here looking at travis in studio a seeing if he will walk over here at one point um, I'm sure. Before he does, though, why don't we kind of get into? Actually, I wanted to bring up a um, a story. I think Sarah Langs did. A shout oh, out Sarah, Sarah Langs, amazing work. We all amazing. love her. Yeah. Um, she did a great piece on four or five ways that the Dodgers' top three of the lineup, so obviously Mookie, Otani, Freddie, can and will be incredibly historic this year. Um, so I'm going to start with the first one, and that is uh, last year's. Uh, 2023 MVP finishes. So, as we know, they all finished in, I think it was top three voting for their MVP in their respective leagues. Uh, That has never been done until I think it was the Yankees in 04 when you're looking at like three guys in the lineup. And that's when it was uh, A Rod, they traded for him. Mm -hmm. They had Gary Sheffield and then Jorge Posada. So, the way they did that, I mean, obviously traded for. And it's a kind of a different scenario, but just the fact that they can have a lineup with just last year, they were all top three. That's historical in itself. Um, The second thing she mentioned, this is like such a, how do you put it? Like a researcher's, uh, you know, ah, you just love it. Looking at the other one, MVPs batting just one, two, three in general. I think we've mentioned this on the Blue Review before, or at least on Travis. 1984 or something like that. Yeah, the 83 Phillies. But the thing is, they only did it for 10 games. So this would be the first team to ever do that as their everyday lineup. So just hearing that is like, holy crap. That We've had s- how many years of baseball? And yeah. this has never happened before? Yeah. It's it's getting up there. It's like 1880-something that it started. So, yeah. So let, let's go into the game just a little bit here, Parker. Yeah, right? so yeah. You were talking about Shohei Otani just a little bit. Would you be surprised if he goes three for three with – uh, you know, a home run, a double, and three RBIs. Or would and would you be surprised if he goes 0 for 4 with three Ks? To answer your question, no, to both of those. I wouldn't side. be surprised. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised on either side. Um, and that's just the Shohei Otani, how do you want to call it? Uh experience. Like I've experienced it for the last six, seven years. Yeah. Overall, he averages out incredible historical seasons. But when that what that means when you say the word average is out is that there are highs and lows. So he will have games where he'll go over. He strikes out more than the average person, yep. especially when you're comparing him to the guys in be- that he's in between Mookie and Freddie. Uh, so I, I will not be surprised if he goes either or. But I think that he's really going to look to make a statement. And maybe he won't go three for three, but I think he's going to do something special. So expect to see something amazing. He's the type of guy that rises to certain occasions. So, like, this is his first game as a Dodger that actually counts. It's in Korea. He wants to show who he is. He This is the type of game that he would come in and just absolutely destroy baseballs. But he is the type of guy that, like you were talking about, we were saying, he strikes out a lot. 
because when you swing with that much power and you swing, excuse me, swing that with that much, you know, intent, he's going to strike out every once in a while and it's totally fine. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset either way. I would love to see him have a massive game in his first time out, but it's really, I, it's a whole long season thing. And this is just one game. Um, I really expect Freddie to have a, a really, really big season and just a big game as well, because he's going to have guys on bases in front of him all the time getting to 120 150 rbis on the season i think is a is absolutely a thing that's possible what are we doing here what's up carlos you, you yeah, we just took it <laughs> we just away. got the chat we got the chat up being active i just want to give do them you want me to read size, those you know when you put them up there just say hey, we're going to do the show like off, off the air show on the show right now oh uh, no to read those when they're, or are you just putting them out there to, to have them put out there i just need to know it's fine. I'm just putting them out there so that we have we have some different visual visualizations. Sure. I can't say that word right. this morning either. But I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, Freddie, I think they all three sat down. I don't know if you've had a chance to watch this yet, but I think they all three sat down with Harold Reynolds. Um, I, it was obviously right before they left to Korea, but they I liked it at the end when he asked, OK, who's going to get he like played a little game with him. Who's going to have the most steals? And they all like joked around. It is first off, it's cool to see yeah. that that bond. Uh, but they all joked around. They all looked at Shohei, and he's like, he's like, no, Freddy, you steal. Like he he's <laughs> getting good at English. And then they asked who's gonna have the most doubles RBIs, and it is actually surprising that both Shohei and Mookie just deferred to Freddie. Should like it's just the truth that he's he gonna have a massive season. He's going to have the most opportunity out of anybody else in this lineup. It's going to be insanity. So, and Shohei, also Freddie was saying that he wants Shohei to get 100 stolen bases. He wants him to run. That's a huge part of his game that wasn't really shown too much um, in Anaheim because like, he's he's a top five. He's maybe, you know better, you saw him more often. He's a top five in speed in the league, right? He's a really bad top three will also be competing for MVP. Yeah. See, they're going to take votes away from each other, but I yeah. think Freddie is the guy that's going to end up getting it. And here comes Travis Rogers, who we can have a conversation about. He and I had this conversation about um, Mookie Betts this morning, and I think it's an important one. Oh, that's Oh yeah. Well, everyone, welcome to the show. Hi, Travis. Travis Rogers. Look at everybody. No, isn't it? Yeah. We are not everybody. really nice. We are not sharing headphones today. And I just want to no, point that today. out. No, we did it. We figured out what to do. This is your your headphone is so heavy, it's pulling it down. Though. Oh, <laughs> well, here, I'll take a little of the slack. Off. No, no, How's no, that? it's totally fine. So you and I were talking about Mookie Betts today and uh, and him at shortstop. Yeah. And we were talking a lot about whether or not, what would we would take? Are we, is it more important to have his defense at a me, middle range or even a high range? Or is, is offense a safe super high? I, I don't think his defense really has anything to do with anything other than if it affects his offense. If it's bad, that'll take care of itself. They'll move on from him. If it's average and his offense suffers, they're going to move him out of there. If it's excellent and his offense suffers, they're going to move him out of there. Mookie Betts is one of the, what, three or four best offensive players yep. in the whole league. And so the Dodgers are going to win games because they score a lot of runs, not because they prevent a lot of runs. So even if they're winning a whole bunch, their best version is with Mookie playing at a high level offensively. So if he gets his offense affected by even a, a relatively modest amount, say it's 10 percent, well, that could be a big deal. So I, I, I don't think unless he's Mookie Betts MVP candidate offensively, I don't think he lasts there a super long time. See, I've always thought that and maybe you think differently, but I always thought that Mookie Betts, when he agreed to play shortstop, he wants to do what's best for the team, obviously, mm -hmm. what he does. I agree. What he, but when he moved over to shortstop, it was like, hey, if you're moving me here, I am now the everyday shortstop. I am the shortstop of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't want to be moved. I'm going to put out everything I have to be the best shortstop possible. But what you're saying is, let's say we get to the all-star break and his numbers have dipped. He's betting 265. Yeah. He only has maybe 10 home runs and his RBIs are down. He's not stealing bases, whatever it happens to be. Right. But his but his defense is amazing. Who cares? Doesn't matter. You, he's gone. Well, first of all, go back to the very first thing you just, said. Just you second, you, you, gone, you said you said that the he wants to do what's best for the team. Well, what's best for the team is having him play at MVP level offense. Right. What's not best for the team is him being you know, really good defensively or average defensively and being less than his best on offense. What's best for the Dodgers is him to be Mookie Betts with the bat in his hands. 
that's it. So whether that's at second base or at shortstop or at right field, you know, I, I, I think, I think what's going to happen in the short term is they're going to try this. And, and I guess the, the, the conversation could be, what is the short term exactly? Right? Like is the short term a month? Is it two months? Is it half a season? I don't know. But if the offense very clearly is kind of at a level, right? Okay. That isn't what we're hoping it'll be. You're going to move him back to second base. You're going to put Miguel Rojas at short and live with eight all-star bats instead of nine. And if that doesn't work, then you go get an Adamas or something else. But I, I really have a hard time envisioning, unless the, the way he stays at short is he's good enough and his offense is what it's stays always been. Yeah, that's so, it. Otherwise, yeah. they, 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 it won't last. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't disagree with you. But in, at the same time, like let's say his offense is dipping, but they're 35 games above 500 when it gets to the all-star break. Mm-hmm. Do they still make that move? Because they're, obviously the, the regular season well, doesn't what, matter. What's the dip look like? Right. Like, right. is the dip like minor? Is it a 5% dip? Then, okay, probably you live with it. But once you get much beyond that, I think his value is that he's an elite, an elite offensive player. So the second that that, that he goes, even if he goes from elite to pretty good, that's a problem because he's still in the prime of his life offensively. You want to milk that elite level offensive player for as long as possible. And I, short shortstop's the heart other than catcher it's the sh- it's the most difficult position on the field to play defensively one of the most important too and and mm-hmm. mentally it's incredibly taxing i thought rojas was talking about this a couple of days ago about everything you need to worry about pre-pitch every pitch about making sure everyone else kind of understands what it is that i, I know mental, mentally he's a really tough player mookie is but you know playing right field you kind of stand there and wait for the ball to come to you playing second base it's more complicated than right field but shortstop's a mm-hmm. whole new level so so to take on shortstop and be the leadoff batter in every single day that makes him yeah. massive and he also is a guy that wants to play every single game mm-hmm. he wants to be in for at least 160 games i think he had what 158 something, something like, like that, that last year so that's something all of those things and throw that Ruben Flores comment up that you had on there just a second ago partner because i think this is interesting and i don't like you talk He's a mentally tough player. Yeah. But does this happen to him? Just from what you've seen from Mookie over the time that he's been here, if Mookie doesn't do well at shortstop, it could affect his mental at the plate. Do you believe that or not so much? I, I think M- M- Mookie is one of the more mentally tough players that we have in baseball. And I would, if I were going to bet on someone that not happening to, Mookie would be near the top of the list. But I also believe it can happen to anybody. The, mm. the, it, it, look, Baseball is so hard, and the second one part of your game isn't quite where you want it, it's really hard not to let it bleed into the other parts of your game. So if he's out there, you know, chopping it up defensively or just, you know, have the weight of the world on his shoulders defensively and mentally, and all of a sudden offense, he goes from being an A-plus to an A-minus or a B-plus, you got to fix it. And, And if that's just the mental tax or whatever it is, but could it happen? Sure. I wouldn't bet on it, but I think it could happen to anybody. Yeah, it could. I I just don't know. I, I'm I'm genuinely curious of what's going to happen this season because, in my mind, Mookie's going to be. He, he's you know, it's fascinating the to me, honestly, yeah. because this is the the middle relief is is a question, and this is a always. question. But middle relief, to your point, yes, always. it's always a question for every team in baseball. That's just the great unknown every single season, right? That the Dodgers are so smart, so advanced, so strategic, so this, that, and the other thing. They're so buttoned up in there. How in the world did they get in this position where the guy, the, the guy that, that, that Gavin Lux at best was across your fingers and hope it works out. It mm-hmm. didn't. And your next best option was to play guys play 10 major league games at shortstop. Right. And he's on the other side of 30. How in the world did we get here? How did that happen? Yeah. Didn't have the, and nobody back up besides Miguel Rojas. And, and that's Miguel Rojas is a great fifth infield. Yes. Right. Fine. Put him wherever you need him. That's fine. fine. But the, your your hey if lux doesn't work our next move is well let's just throw mookie bets in there and hope it works out that's crazy <laughs> and to put me. everything possible on top of him like you're saying you just put shortstop put lead yeah off, put it you have to be at the top of your game at every single cent nuts cent. So it's, it's maybe aaron insane. donald can do it yeah sure. <laughs> he's, he's got some time now massive yeah. dude. maybe we just put him behind the plate why not that, that might work out yeah. whenever well, will smith needs some day off absolutely yeah <laughs> travis you you brought up a great point and of course, the reason they won so many games last year, like you said, Mookie had over a 160 OPS alongside Freddie. Both of them were top three MVP finishes, and that's what they need to win those types of games again. Yeah. So, Travis, I just want to thank you for joining the show. We'll have to wrap it up so that Thanks, you Travis. can get to Travis and Sliwa. Uh, it's pretty good. 
Well, I, I hope we can have you on, you know, more often. We can react Done. to the game less than 24 hours away. I appreciate you, See Travis. <laughs> have a good one. And Greg, um, we'll have to close out here. There's yep. a lot more we want to get to, but uh, we'll just have to react tomorrow. Whether yep. we're up at 3 a.m. or not, we'll see. You can see us on social media. Go ahead and follow Greg at corporate. Is it underscore Greg? Yep, corporate underscore Greg. And you can find me at Bell underscore Parker. I think we'll be tweeting about the game if we're up, so you can find that there. Maybe. Um, <laughs> maybe <laughs> on ESPN Los Angeles as well if yeah. I'm if I'm feeling up for it. Uh, yeah. But thank you to LAX. Thank you for joining us in the chat. Thank you for being active. I see that we've had a lot more viewers than we usually do, so proud to see Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Thank it. you again. Uh, this has been the Blue Review, and we will see you tomorrow. Go Dodgers.